Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and joining us today is Stacy and we're going to be talking about how to find research assistantship opportunities working with professors and lots of tips from Stacy based on her experience. Hey Stacy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's our pleasure. So let's start with an introduction. Can you tell us a little bit about you? Yeah, so I'm currently a PhD student in mechanical engineering at New York University. And my research is focused on bipedal robots um, in relation to stability and using inspiration from biology, actually penguins, um, to better understand stability. That's so cool. So my first question to you is, can you tell us a little bit about your educational background? Because you've changed universities a couple of times. Yeah, so I started my undergrad actually at UC Davis um, in California. And then I transferred to Westchester University in Pennsylvania. I did a summer research assistantship um, or research opportunity at Louisiana Tech University. And then I went for a biomath PhD because undergrad was math. Um, so then I went for a biomath PhD program at Florida State University. And then from there, I decided to transfer into mechanical engineering. And then I transferred to New York University, which is where I finally ended up. So I finished. Uh, master's at Florida State University so I got that on my way out but now I'm at New York University. Thank you so much for sharing that because I know sometimes people start in a particular field and then they're like okay this is what they have to stick to it but it's very possible to switch fields especially here in the U.S. right? Yeah definitely. All right so then my next question to you is which I think a lot of people fear is you can't pursue robotics with a mechanical engineering background or the opportunities are very limited. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I came from a math background, right? So it's a little different. Robotics control side is very, very, very heavy in math. So for me, that really worked. In terms of coming from like a more mechanical engineering, more hardware thing, there's a lot of leeway in PhDs. So like, right, mechanical engineering professors are still leading like machine learning projects and things like that. Robotics is a very, very interdisciplinary field. So I think there's a lot of things to draw from. There are definitely important things that are like must-haves. Like you have to be able to code to some extent. You're going to have a really hard time in robotics if you can't code. You hopefully will have some background in math, preferably up to like linear algebra. I know people that have gone into robotics without having that much math and they made it up and they figured it out. So like all these things are doable. I think you just have to be willing to study on your own um, in order to fill in those gaps if you want to go a certain direction. But again, it, it kind of depends on like what, where your interests lie, right? You might be a hardware person that's just building things, or you might end up going really, really heavy into machine learning or really, really heavy into like optimization, things like that. It kind of just depends where your path takes you. But I wouldn't be too concerned about not having the skills. Those are things you can pick up on the way. Yeah, to totally. It's just make sure whatever you don't know, and if you come across it, you are able to spend the time and motivate yourself to just pick it up. All right, so now let's talk about how you came across your current opportunity. How did you get in touch with the professor and how did it all start for you? So I got a National Science Foundation for my research proposal, um, which was very, very specific. And I loved my research, right? I did it for a couple of years and I still loved it. When I switched programs, I wanted to continue that research. So that really led me to very, very specific professors that were working in like legged robotics and stuff like that. So that's kind of how I ended up here was really looking at like what my options were, who fit my research interests, which was a lot of research in itself, right? Like understanding what professors doing what and what lab would actually like make sense for you to join is a really, really big question for anyone, regardless if you already have like a really, really like good idea of what you want to do, or if you have no idea and you're exploring. Either way, like the advisor you end up with does have like a huge impact on your PhD. And you want to end up in a lab that has the resources and the skills that are appropriate for the type of work that you want to do. So I think that was the biggest part was really like figuring out who I wanted to work with. And then from there, it's kind of reaching out to them, having an interview with them. It's easier if you come in with your own funding to get into programs. So I would definitely recommend for everyone watching to like look at what kind of funding opportunities you can find. So you mentioned two things. One is you have to first find professors and labs that do the kind of research you want to do and then reach out to the professors. So let's talk about the first part. How do you go about figuring out or finding these professors and research or any advice and tip that you might have on how one should go about it? There is definitely like a lot that comes into play. First step is like, what do you want to do, right? I think that there's like a lot of different paths and understanding what path works for you. You probably 
don't want to pursue a PhD in something that you have absolutely zero experience in. If you're in that situation and you're like, hey, I really want to do machine learning, but I've never done any of it, start doing some machine learning before you apply. Because this is like a substantial amount of time in your life. So like you really want to know what's going to make you happy and like really kind of flesh out what your passion is before you sign up for like five or more years of like grueling work specifically on that, that that's like your entire world, right? Like really know what you're signing up for. So I think you got to play around a little bit. And again, like maybe that's stuff that you do in undergrad where you find different research opportunities, different labs, different internships, right? Or maybe it's just like hobby things that you try a couple of fun projects on your own at home, right? There's a lot of online resources. There's a lot of ways to like figure out what your interest is. So I definitely think that's step number one. You mentioned that you started looking for labs. So in general, what I know is you just Google labs up and you Google professors up and then you go through their website. Do you have any additional insight onto what are some of the ways one can like even find labs that do a particular kind of research? Another great way is if you're involved with research or just in general, like go on Google Scholar and start reading papers about your research interests. One, that's like a really, really good way to do well in an interview or in your essay that you're going to write, right? Because then you're actually like building up the knowledge. And two, it's a really good way to start understanding who's in the field and like what the field is at this point. So I think that's, you know, you look at who the author is, right? Who's the author on the paper? Um, Who are they citing in their paper, right? Like things like that is a good way to get to know people. The other way is really to go to conferences. Luckily, the pandemic has made conferences a lot more accessible. So like robotics conferences in general, are one, really, really expensive, and two, can be kind of far away depending where you live. But a lot of conferences are starting to offer like virtual options. And going to a conference is a really good experience because normally like you can go to a conference that's focused on one thing, so then you get all the people, or you can go to a conference that's really broad, but then you can go to like the biorobotic session and find all your people, right? So conference is another way. And if you live far away and can't afford the crazy cost of a conference, definitely check out just doing the virtual attendance. I think it is a good opportunity. Yeah, those are some really good, good ways. Like don't just Google, go to Google Scholar, read the papers, look at the citations so you'll find other people in the same field and our conferences. So now let's move to the third step, which is reaching out to professors. Uh, How did you go about it? And what are some advice that you would give to students on how to reach out to professors for research? It's easier if you are in the know, especially like, I think that largely depends on like, what level you're applying to, right? If you're applying to the top schools, those professors get a lot of emails. So it really is good if you have the opportunity to introduce yourself at the conference and they know that they're expecting an email from you, that's really the best way if you're going for the most competitive opportunities. Again, different programs have different things to offer, right? Different students work better in different types of educational environments. So the best programs might not always be the best program for you specifically. But if that is your goal, I think trying to make connections is important. The other thing is pay attention to like their directions on their website, right? Some of them tell you like, don't talk to me until after you've applied. So so don't reach out to them until you've like put in a formal application, right? Things like that. And then once you are ready to email the professor, I think a big part is what do you email them? And that really is how well do you know them, right? Like you have to ask yourself, am I ready to email this professor? Do I understand the basics of their work? Do I have interesting questions about their work? Do I think that I have skills that relate to them, right? And these are the types of things that you would want to include in an email is really like showing that you understand their work, that you've read their work, showing how you can fit in their lab, how they can benefit from having you as a PhD student. And then lastly would be just simply like attaching your resume, right? It's really good to just include that so that they can see all of your skills other than what you briefly introduce in in your email. Yeah, that's some really solid advice because I think sometimes students struggle to figure out what do I even write in that email? Talk about their research, talk about what you bring to the table, talk about why you want to work with this professor. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so my next question is how about reaching out to students who are existing in that lab right now? So one way is definitely reaching out to the professor, but what are your thoughts on reaching out to students who are currently working in the lab? So it depends like what, right? There's a lot of stages to like entering a PhD program, right? So there's a couple different stages that you might want to reach out to others. One, if you know you have like a dream advisor that you really like and you see one of their students presenting a poster at a conference, 
that's a good chance to start, you know, like building relationships, building connections. So that's something I've done, um, not for my advisor, but for a collaborator that I met one of his students through a conference. And that ultimately led to a really, really positive, important collaboration for me. So I will say like, that is a great way that if you see parallels between your work and someone else's work, and you have the opportunity to talk to them, talk to them, get out of your comfort zone a little, it might be like a little bit intimidating, depending who it is. I would definitely suggest that the other time that I think is really, really important for students to reach out to other students is when you're choosing a lab. Um, it's important to know what the lab culture is. It's important to know what the experiences are, right? Everyone has different challenges in robotics. So I think it is important to take into consideration what those challenges mean for you, right? So if you're a female in engineering, you might want to ask, do you have female students and talk to the female students, right? That's like an important thing. Another thing is like, I know some people pursue grad school when they have children and some advisors are kind of nightmares about being like accommodating towards other people's schedules. So you have to really determine like what matters to you, like what kind of lab culture do you need personally? based off of your own life, right? And your own personal desires and how hands-on you want a professor to be, right? So have in your head, like, this is my ideal working environment. And then talk to the students and be like, so what is, you know, so does it match? Does the working environment have the things that I want or the things that I really need, right? Like every program isn't necessarily going to work with your life. Yeah, that's some really solid advice. Make sure to hear from existing student what it would be like to work with the professor and see if it matches your goals and it's something you're comfortable with yeah I think like when I started my PhD I like purposely picked like a super hands-on professor because I didn't have an engineering background so I didn't want a professor that was just gonna like let me like do whatever because I was just like okay but like I'm not really at the point where I can just kind of like do my own thing because there's like a lot of catching up that I had to do. That absolutely makes sense. And that's really great advice. My last question would be any advice in general you want to give to students who are looking to do research and work with professors? One piece of advice is that there's a place for you. I think sometimes it's hard. Everyone has different backgrounds, different races, right? Sometimes it's hard to find your place. And I will say that robotics is no exception, right? There's bad people in the world um, and you have to find the good people. So I will say like, I think one of the most important things I think is really that people know that there's a place, that there are people in robotics that will welcome you, that like you can find your niche. So if you have trouble, if you meet a couple jerks along the way, like don't give up, like it's okay. Like it, it could happen. Maybe it won't, maybe it will. But like, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't pursue this degree. That doesn't mean that it's not the place for you, right? Wow, that's such great advice. Not just, I think it applies everywhere. Even if you're working in the industry and you have a horrible boss, it doesn't mean you are horrible. It just means you have to find a better company. I think, yeah, I really love that. Thank you for saying that advice. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your experiences. I'm sure it'll help a lot of students who are looking to find research. I think your advice on going to conferences was just really good. It's a great way to be able to talk to professors and existing students because they do get a ton of email and you might not get a reply. Yeah, it's a lot easier to walk up to a professor at a conference than to have a professor click and open and read and respond to your email in addition to the like 100 other emails that they get. So true. Uh, once again, thank you so much. 